future classes just need to get our class experience. So and you provide the video on All right, so we're gonna talk about something that you're actually familiar with, which you don't necessarily believe that you're familiar with. It's called the derivative. Gosh, they're calling the derivative something that looks familiar. Have we seen this notation before? The limit is h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h? The answer is yes. What did we call that before? We call that the instantaneous rate of change. of f of x at some point x. We also uh, know this to be synonymous with the slope of the tangent line to your function at x. And so we are familiar with that. So it is such an important concept in math that we are <coughs> going to give it a formal name. And we're going to call it the derivative because it's a function in its own right. Okay, but there's also an alternate definition. And it goes at it from a different uh, point of view, pardon the pun, right? <laughs> no, I don't have time to hit it. Here we go. If we're going to uh, draw our function here, here's my classic f of x. And I'm going to, I want to find the slope at uh, x equals. Um, a so I'm going to choose some point that is x away and so this point that's x away x away is going to be x comma f of x and what is the point at a it's going to be a comma f of a and then we're going to find the slope between those two points, the secant line slope between those two points. And when we do that, what do we get? We get f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. And so what happens then as I let x get closer and closer to a? Are we getting closer and closer to the line that's tangent? We sure are, and when we do that, uh, it sounds like we're approaching something, which is a limit, that's limit language. So if I put the limit then as x approaches a, uh, then that's also a tangent line. So it's just a different way of thinking of it. Instead of making up your own point that's h away where h is really small and getting smaller we're going to say we are x away and we're going to make x get closer and closer to a so it's just um, a different um, perspective now i always suggest to students to pick one of the methods and stick with it on a test i'm never going to ask you to do uh, it a specific way to find the derivative, a specific way. I am partial to the f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Um, I like that mathematics of that. This has a different feel to it, but it's not wrong. And I'm going to do an example. Um, in fact, let's do an example really quickly. That's on the next page right here. We're going to do it with the regular definition and one with the, with the alternate definition. And you'll notice I'm going to talk about the notation in just a minute. That the notation here is f of x, but it's got a little mark in the middle, doesn't it? It's f prime. And I'm going to go through all of the notations that are possible in just a second. But I feel like we should do an example with a new definition, all right? So this is with our old definition, the one that we're comfortable with. I'm going to say f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0. Of, now what am I going to do? I'm going to plug x plus h in for x. So this is going to be the square root of x plus h 
plus 2 minus f of x, which is the square root of x plus 2, all over h. And then we have to do our limit work. Well, we can't use direct substitution here because h will be 0 in the denominator. So we have to do something fancy, which is? We're going to multiply by the conjugate. Yeah, so the conjugate is going to be x plus h plus 2 plus root x plus 2 all over the square root of x plus h plus 2 plus the square root of x plus 2. And when we do that, we get the difference of squares on top, which means it's going to be x plus h plus 2. The square root of that squared, which is just x plus h plus 2. And then I'm going to square the square root of x plus 2, which is x plus 2. But I have a negative there, a pesky negative, which I have to distribute. distribute. So this will be minus x minus 2 all over h. And don't forget um, this the square root of x plus h plus 2 plus the square root of x plus 2 on the bottom. That still sticks around. I'm guilty of that sometimes, <laughs> leaving this over here. So I have to consciously tell myself to remember to bring it with me. All right. So what can we cancel out here on the, in the numerator? We can cancel out the x, the 2s, and then h factor, and then I'm left with a 1 on top. And we're left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over uh, the square root of x plus h plus 2 plus the square root of x plus 2. And then now we can let h go to 0. And then I get 1 over... Well, how many, if I let h go to 0, root x plus 2 do I have? 2. So this is 2 square root of x plus 2. And now this is f prime of x. And does it make sense now? I'm going to call this a derivative, and I'm using function notation that the derivative is a function in its own right. It is. Okay. So, uh, so this is the instantaneous rate of change. It's the slope of all the secant lines, or all the secant lines, all the tangent lines to the function f at any value of x you choose where the domain exists. Um, all the, the cool stuff that we're going to do with calculus. All right, let's try the other method. What was the other method? Well, we said that f prime of x on the first page equaled the limit as x approaches a. And I'm just re reciting the definition. Now, the reason we have to know the alternate definition is sometimes on multiple choice questions, it's asking you and it'll use this language. So you just have to be familiar with this language, knowing that it's asking for what? The derivative. All right, recall, what was f of x? Square root of x plus 2. This is for my, my memory here. So we're going to fill it in the stuff we know f of x is just the square root of x plus 2 minus, now this says take what and do it do with a, what do I do with it? I plug it into f of x over here so I get the square root of a plus 2 all over x minus a. Now what's the different feel here? I'm not plugging in 0 for h anymore, I'm plugging in a for X. Well, what happens when I plug in A for X in the denominator? We get an undefined situation. So instead of trying to cancel out an H, I'm trying to cancel out a factor of X minus A. But I'm still going to use the same approach here, which is the conjugate. Yep. So this is going to be the square root of X plus 2 uh, plus the square root of A plus 2 all over the square root of x plus 2 plus the square root of a plus 2. All right, when I do that, we get the limit then as x approaches a. Uh, well, the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2 is just x plus 2 minus, now I've got to be careful because I've got a pesky negative here. So it's going to be minus a minus Two, because the square root of a plus 2 times the square root of a plus 2 is just a plus 2, and the distributing the negative, I get negative a minus 2, all over 
Now we have to use parentheses here in the denominator because I'm multiplying x minus a times all of this madness of the conjugate, which is x plus 2 plus the square root of a plus 2. And then what happens in the numerator? The, the twos cancel, which makes me very happy because what's left on top now is the very thing we need to cancel out, which is wonderful. And so since these are factors, I can uh, get rid of them. And I'm left with a 1 on top, so this is the limit then as x approaches a of 1 over the square root of x plus 2 plus the square root of a plus 2. <coughs> um, now I'm going to let x approach a, which means I'm taking x and I'm going to put 1 in its place. a, so this is going to equal then 1 over 2 root a plus now this is f prime not of x, but f prime of a. So I really should re re review my notation up here, right? This is f prime of a. Sorry about that. But a is just like x, so if I know what a is, do I know what the slope is at that location? Yes. So do you agree that it has just a, it's a different feel? Instead of canceling out an x, you're canceling out a factor of? x minus a. So it just has a different feel. And I just would recommend that you stick one with one method. Um, and I, I really don't have, I, I have a preference personally, this is my preference, the, the x plus h. Uh, but really it's okay if you use this one. Alright, and I mean that. <laughs> Alright, notation. Well the derivative is a very powerful uh, idea in math, and we just know, we noticed some notation here, so let's talk about derivative notation. So that when we see it, we know exactly what the question is asking us. All right, so we already saw this one, and how do we say that? We say f, I mean, if we're going to actually say it, we say f prime of x. And we have many players in the calculus world, but Lagrange did this one. Lagrange, Lagrange, anybody got any? What have you heard? Lagrange? I'm going to call it Lagrange. As long as we're talking the same language, right? All right. You can also see <coughs> this kind of notation, which is, now we're, where have we seen something that looks like this? Something that looks like this would be delta f over delta x. This is a little b versus a, okay? So this means a larger change in f, the, the triangle shape, or the delta. This means a smaller change, infinitesimally small change, okay? And we would say df dx. I know. df dx. Similarly, how do you suppose we would say this? dy dx, yes. <laughs> All right, and this is Leibniz's notation. And Leibniz was the king of notation. His notation is very elegant. And there were, there's a book called Calculus Wars that uh, talks about um, when calculus was invented and uh, Leibniz and Newton duking it out. 
not literally, you know, not you know, physically, but literally. Who, who, who discovered it first? And yes. Who came up with the notation of inverses? I have no idea. But I need to look into that because I, I wish I'd been in the room or a muse of some sort and said, uh, no, that's going to that's gonna offend all teenagers. All right. So I just talked about Leibniz, but this one is a Y with a dot on top. And we call this Y dot. <laughs> and this is Newton's language, Newton's notation. See, that expand the page is just not there. I am yeah, sorry. You can't expand your paper, but I can expand the page. All right? Y dot. <coughs> now, that's the rate of change of Y with respect to some variable, whether it's T. And those. Or, or theta or or x, but if it's with respect to y, the rate of change of your position with respect to time is your velocity. So y dot is synonymous, synonymous with velocity, and Newton created calculus to solve physics problems. Okay, so if y dot is velocity, What's y double dot? Acceleration. Acceleration. Okay, people, you're too obsessed with that. It sounds cool. You're such a jerk. That's so funny. Where's the drums? Remember. Remember. I'll be fine. Okay. Euler's notation capital D, which re represents obviously the derivative of f of x with respect to x. So this is the derivative. Okay, and my WRT is with respect to, and this is Euler's notation. <coughs> you know, and there's angular velocity, which is theta dot, or angular acceleration, which is theta double dot. Um, there's also with Lagrange y prime, I think, you know, y prime, or y prime of x. All of these different notations mean the same thing. So it's going to be annoying when you see a question in the homework here that's saying find f prime of x, find dy dx, find, you know, the derivative of f of x with respect to x. Are they asking you all the same thing? The answer is yes. They're asking you to find the derivative, which is nothing more than the Instantaneous rate of change of your function with respect to x, which is a slope of the tangent line to your function. Okay? So all we have done now is added a fancy word called the derivative. That's the only thing that has changed today. Okay? Which is good news. All right? And so we've already got an example with the original definition that we are familiar with and then the alternate definition. All right, so let's talk about what the, the relationship is between a function and its derivative, which is nothing more than the tangent rate of change, or the slope's false tangent line. Okay, so I have given you a graph here, and we're going to graph x cubed. And we're going to pretend that the x cubed is a position function. And we'll say that it's in meters, and this is in seconds, okay? Now, x cubed is not necessarily realistic, but, you know, it's a nice function to start off with. Okay, so let's graph it. We've got a point at 0, 0, 1, 0, 
negative one, I'm missing one, one, sorry, negative one, one, negative one, negative one, and then two, eight, which I'm going to put up here, and then negative two, negative eight, and there it is, where's our function right there. Now, I really should have drawn this a little bit better, because we're going to figure something out here. So we want to find the derivative of f. So we want to say f prime of x, because this is the notation they gave us, f of x. So we would say f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h, which is, I'm going to take x plus h and plug it into x cubed, and we get x plus h quantity cubed minus x cubed all over h. Yes, and I hear some groaning there because we have to expand. X plus H cubed. It is 1, 3, 3, 1 with Pascal. We all remember Pascal. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, and so on. Now, it's not X cubed plus H cubed. I don't have to worry about that, about that with anybody in this room, right? <laughs> that would be horrifying, but we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so this is the limit as h goes to zero. I'd have to talk to your on a street job teacher, which would be really silly. Here we go. I'd be talking to myself, right? x cubed plus x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed minus x cubed, God bless you, all over h equals the limit. As h goes to zero of what magically happened? The x, x cubes canceled, and I'm allowed to factor out an h. And then we're left with three x squared plus three x h plus h squared all over h. And then I can joyfully cancel out my domain problem with the h. And I'm left with the limit then as h goes to 0 of 3x squared plus, whoops, I don't want my plus there, I'm going to change it, plus 3xh plus h squared. And now I'm going to let h go to 0 and get 3x squared. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. Now remember, f prime of x is the rate of change of f of x with respect to, not all at once, x. But we've got, <coughs> if this is meters, right, this is seconds. This is meters per seconds. I really should have this as t, but I'm going to use x as time. Is that all right? You good? okay with that? So, this means, this whatever I get here is in meters per second. Because the slope to this curve, no matter where you take it, is going to be the change in um, f over the change in x. But if I make it really small change, it's going to be the change in f over the change in x. And if we make that change so small, it's the slope of the tangent line, which is really, really cool. Okay, so meters per second. So I'm going to write here, our next curve is going to be f prime of x equals 3x squared. Let's analyze this function right now. Does this function, 3x squared, have any zeros? Yes, it has, a, it has one zero, which is where? Zero. At zero. And does it look like, theoretically, I should have a zero slope here? Yes. Okay. What kind of slopes do we have for 3x squared besides zero? Positive. So the slopes are always positive. Does it look reasonable, the slopes here to x cubed are always positive? Okay. And what happens to x squared as x gets really, really large? The slopes get big positive, don't they? And what about if I make it really, really small or big negative? It's still big positive slopes. All right, so we're going to graph now 3x squared. But 3x squared is a function in its own right and has a derivative. 
So we're going to graph this now, zero, zero, and I promise to have plot the points better this time. It's going to be one, three, and negative one, three. Do you notice that this curve, 3x squared, has one zero and is always positive? Which means x cubed it has only positive slope to zero slope. Okay? Now, this one has a derivative. Now, instead of calling it f prime, we call it f double prime of x. So I use two prime marks. You mean conservative as opposed to one. It's the first derivative. I'm not sure where that language comes from. I need to figure that out. It's the first time I've ever been asked that. Okay, we'll figure that out, but not right now, but yes, we'll, pick, we'll, put, we'll put that in our mind. We'll, we'll answer that question. Why do they call it prime? That's prime. Yeah, maybe. Double prime, here we go. This we're going to do the limit as h goes to 0 of 3 times x plus h quantity squared, because we're going to take x plus h and plug it into 3x squared, where x is, and this minus 3x squared all over h equals the limit as h goes to 0 of, well, this is 3 times I'm going to expand x plus h using 1, 2, 1. So it's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x squared all over h. The limit as h goes to 0 of 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 3x squared all over h. And what cancels out are the 3x squared. And then I can factor out an h. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of h times 6x plus 3h all over h. And then the h is cancel, eliminating our domain problem. And we get... So limit as h goes to 0 of 6x plus 3h, but the h cancels out the 3 term, and we get 6x. So this is f double prime of x. Now, if the units here, if the units here are meters per second by seconds, John, Right? Meters per second by set over seconds. This is acceleration, yes. This is meters <coughs> per second squared. So the derivative of, we never named this, we really should, right? This is velocity because it's meters per second. Oops. The derivative of velocity is acceleration. So acceleration is meters per second, and is this acceleration function y or f double prime equals six x a function in its own right? Okay, so let's think about it. We have a rate of change here, so this is going to be meters per second per sec over seconds. Do you see how that's meters per second squared? So the slope to velocity is acceleration. So now we're going to graph f double prime of x which is 6x, and we said that that's acceleration. And what are its units? If the units are meters per second squared. And we've got seconds over here. Now, 6x is a whole lot easier to graph, yes? So 0, 0, I have a point, and then 1, 6, and negative 1. Negative 6, it's not quite there, but there we go. I should really go through this point. Okay? 
Now, does this have a rate of change? So, when I say rate of, rate of change, it does, right? It's instantaneous rate of change. Is its slope, which would be meters per second squared over seconds, which is meters per second cubed, which is jerk, which is the which is the effect that if you're riding a roller coaster and you're accelerating, which means you're going faster and faster, and then all of a sudden you accelerate more, or you, your velocity changes dramatically, right? And your head jerks back. That's why they call it that. Okay. The rate of change is acceleration, yes. So can everybody look at the rate of change at this acceleration and tell me what it is? Six. It's six. Why? Because it's a line. And the slope is six. But what would we label that? We would say not F double prime, but F triple prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of, what are we going to fill it in, John? Uh, 6x plus h. Yeah. Minus 6x. x plus h minus 6x all over h. The limit as h goes to zero of, 6x plus 6h minus 6x all over h. What nicely happens here are the 6x's cancel, and then the h's cancel, and I'm left with 6. So f triple prime is equal to 6, but is that a function in its own right? Okay, and we said, what were the units on this? This was meters per second. Cube, do we call this jerk? This is, remember now, the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change. It's not the average rate of change. And we'll talk about, um, yes, yeah, different Well, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do the next one now. Because what is the rate of change in acceleration here? It's 6, which is the jerk. But is that a function in its own right? The answer is... Yes. How far are we going to go? Okay, so I'm just going to do the very next one. Then we have jams and then snap. Yes, that two of the summers. Yes, snap. Yes, crackle pop. Just when you summarize your first one, it's equal. Okay, once we get beyond. No, once we get beyond three. The notation is now we change the numbers and we put them in parentheses. No. Okay. And if I were going to graph the triple prime here, what kind of graph does that look like? It, it's a horizontal line at six. And what is its slope? It's zero. So this is zero. Okay. Uh, this course only goes to the to jerk. Okay, and the joke is, right, don't be such a third derivative. Ah, <laughs> okay. All right, so what kind of problems might we see? And I apologize that yours are not in color, but we are going to identify the function and the first and the second derivative because we've got three three graphs here. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I would say that that's a that's a a good analysis. Um, but when I when I Analyzing these things, I'm looking for zero slopes because zero tangent slopes because they stick out. Like this big, big blue curve, do you see a zero some a zero slope somewhere? I see a zero slope where here and here, and I see it here. Okay, on the red curve, where do we see zero slopes? I'm gonna do it in yellow. Here, 
and here. All right, what about um, the black curve? I see slope of zero here, a slope of zero here, and a slope of zero here. And notice that where are these slopes that have uh, zero magnitude there? Where are they occurring? They're occurring at interesting places on this, these functions. And that they're relative extreme, you're right. So that's something that we're going to be studying as well. So, okay, so do you see any functions where they have a zero slope and then there's a function somewhere that has a zero on it? Okay, so like right here, this has a zero slope, this blue one, right? Do you see another function that has a zero there? The red one has a zero. Okay, so let's go here to this, over here at number negative four. Does the red one also have a zero there? Close. What about uh, here? Of course, I could have drawn, I mean, you know, I should have drawn it further out here, right? So do you see that that's a zero? So that's a possibility that the blue function is a function and its derivative is the red one. Because remember, the derivative is nothing more than the, the y values of the red one are the slopes to the blue one, if that's what we're going to choose. Now, what about the red one? What, did it have, where, is the, where are the yellow zeros? Do you see a, another function that has zeros where they? it's the black one? Do you see that? So the blue one is the function. Wait, where's the zero? It's... I'll show you just a second. Let me write this function down. Okay. I'm going to get a different color here. Okay, so the blue function has a zero, and so does the red one there. A zero slope, and the red one has a zero. And the blue function has a zero around here, and guess what else has a zero in its place? And then the red one has a zero here, which is about where the blue one has another zero. You see, the, see where that's happening? Yeah, so it's like every time where it's a zero slope. Where it's a zero slope, so the parent function will have a zero, yeah. So you, you would say the red is the derivative. Yes, because the red has a zero slope when the blue has, I mean, a zero y value when the when the blue one has a zero slope. What do you want to talk about that? I, mean, I like that that analysis there. Okay, so what did we say the derivative of the red one was? The black. Does that make sense? Do I have a um, or? Yeah, the derivative. Where is the zero slope on the red curve? It's where the yellow is? Do I have a zero on the black curve there? Yes. And it's y value, yes. And this red curve uh, on the left here, near ne between negative three and negative two, does the black curve have a zero there? Yep. So the function is blue. The red one is the first derivative. And then the derivative of the first derivative is the second derivative, which is the flat curve. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. So let's write that. That that means that this could be f of x, and this would be f prime of x, and this would be f double prime of x. All right, we got another one. <laughs> the blue does not have any zero slopes, does it? Does the black one? Yes. Okay, if the black one has a zero slope, is what function has a zero where the black one has a zero slope? The red, okay? What kind of slopes are going on here? I have really small slopes over here, right? They're, they're not zero necessarily, but 
the blue one has small slopes to it, and then it has an increasing slope, and then what happens to the slope? It starts, uh, this seems to be about its maximum slope, right? And then the slope, because think about it, right? Um, this is a big positive. This is not as big. This is smaller, and this is zero, right? And then what is this one? That's infinite. That's undefined, but it's, a, it's an infinite slope. That's when the denominator is zero. But we'll go there another time, okay? So this is big, 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 big positive or big negative. A little negative, right? Magnitude, a big number with a negative in front of it, right? Okay, we go. All right, this is a big positive, not as big as I go down, okay? So this blue curve has tangent line slopes that come to a maximum right about here in the middle. And then what happens is they start getting smaller. So do you see how the black curve would fit that bill? So this is going to be f of x. This is f prime of x. And this the red one is f double prime. Now think about it, on this black curve, this, the horizontal uh, slope right here, what's happening? What kind of slopes do I have to the left of it? I have positive, small positive, and then I go to zero, and then I have what kind of slopes on the left? Negative slopes, right? What happens to the y values on the red curve? I have positive numbers, and I have a zero, and then I have negative numbers. So the red curve... Its y values are the slopes to the black curve. I know. It, it takes a little bit of time to sink in. Yeah. So if the slope on the black one is going down negatively, why isn't the blue one? Okay, okay, so that's a great question. So we have what kind of slopes on the blue one? Positive, but then they get to a point, right? That, and, and then what starts happening to them? They get less positive. They get less positive. That's what's going on. Okay. Sometimes what helps me is drawing those little micro tangent lines. Okay. It's a little bit mind blowing, I know. Here we go. But I have an opportunity for practice. There is a program out there that's called the derivative matching game. All right, there's a derivative matching game. And if this works appropriately, I can press this link and it takes me there. I'm so excited it worked. Okay, that means I embedded the link in a document. <laughs> Woo! Yes. For an old chart, that's pretty amazing. Okay, here we go, moving up. I'm going to go to the derivative matching game, the math association. Uh, created this matching game, and, or posted it, and I'm going to click on it. Here we go. Oh, how can that be blocked? Oh, yes, I see it. Thank you. Manage. Allow. No sites added. Oh no! Miss Miller, just go back to okay, the last right. tab that we were on. Oh yeah, yeah. Go back to the last tab. Last okay, tab. Now go back to the tab of your the, the game. The, the game was on the tab game. Oh yes, sir. Like, should be click, click on the click puzzle on piece. piece. Yeah. Wow. Yay. Yay! We did it. Okay. Start. All right. Thank you. Now we're gonna press start. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Ordinarily, there is nice music playing in the background. I don't know why the music is not playing. Here, you can play it. It's so quiet. It's relaxing. It's calm. Music, right? Here we go. So we're going to choose a graph of F, and G is its derivative. Okay, so I have a zero slope here, zero slope here, and almost zero slope here. 
But then I had a zero slope here and a zero slope here. I'm thinking that this might yeah. be the function and this is the derivative. Yeah. So what do we do? We do, we take this and we drag it. And then I say, I don't know how. It was a match. Okay. So what? One of the Okay. Okay. So which one? This one is this one is the function, right? Why? Because it's curvy. This has a derivative of zero here down on the left side, correct? And this has a zero here, don't I? Our score is just gone down. No wait. Oh, you should tap it. How do I? So I just won the game. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna go back. Have a play again. I think. We're going to increase the game size. <gasps> yes, yeah, so that's a good choice, yes? That's what you're talking about, right? I have a zero slope here. But do I have any zeros here? But what kind of slopes are on this side on the left? On the parabola, it's negative and then positive. The one below it, yes. So I think it's this one. Okay, now what? I didn't mean to do that. I just need to be able to see. All right, this has an interesting situation here. I've got a, a zero on the right side. Do I see what kind of slopes are over here? Positive numbers going to a zero slope, going to a negative. Positive numbers going to a zero slope, going to a negative. Does that look reasonable? No. Okay, okay, we'll do this first. Let's see if that works. Yay. All right, wait, which one? This one is the derivative of this one? Bottom right. Oh, okay, so let's see. You're going to say this one is that function there? Yay! Very nice. And now which one? I don't like the fact that I. I know. I just you get rid of that one. Second bottom on the far left. You should do the cosine. And then two across one, which is just the next one across. So I have a zero slope here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the function. No, no. That's okay. Think about it. That's got a zero slope here, zero slope here, zero, zero. Yes. Well, but I have negative slopes over here. Do I have any negative numbers over here? It's this one. Yes. So you are right. This is sine, isn't it? And this one is cosine. Well, okay. So what kind of slopes does this have to it? Negative to zero to positive. Negative to zero to positive. Okay. All right. A two is the derivative of. Is this A, B, C, D? Yeah. A2 is the derivative of a, a 4. Okay, I, I buy that. So I'm going to put this in the graph and then this in the deri derivative. Very nice. Okay. Next one. 
I got what kind of slopes here? Negative. So I need negative numbers, and then I have. This has a zero slope. This has a zero slope. Zero, zero. So this one. This one could be the this one could be the function, and this could be its derivative. What, where are my zero slopes? This is a zero, and this is a zero up here, and that one has a zero where? Here and here? And I have what kind of slopes on this side? Positive. Positive, and I have negative. Do you see how this, I think this is a function. Do you agree? Yeah. And then that's the derivative, maybe? We're going to see. Oh. What? Maybe. 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 Wait, okay, D2. Zero. Oh, okay. D4, B2, D2. Oh, hold on, C1. It's going to be C1. Come do it. B2 is the first. No, B2 is at the back center. D2 is the first. Okay, what's next? Okay, what's the function? Oh yeah, this is the function. I agree. I agree. And then last oh, but least. Now what's interesting about this graph here is this has what kind of, it's, it's always positive, isn't it? What's going on here? So which one's the derivative? That one. So that's the function, yes, do you agree? Because it's got always positive slopes, and then my y's are all positive here. Okay, you can have an option where you don't keep score. So um, there is matching on the AP exam. You know, like, why well, it's not matching, but you have to identify which might be a derivative of what. You know, they'll give you a picture and say, what could possibly be the derivative of this one? You know? Or if this is a derivative, what could the parent look like? Yeah. Okay. So, do you have a way to practice? Yes. Yes. And you have the link in your document. Oh, nice. No. Okay. Now, I'm not done yet. Guess what? Our lovely calculator will do derivatives. Our lovely calculator will do derivatives. Okay, so somebody gonna drive for me? I've got my calculator up here. Okay, so do me a favor. All right, so can you, uh, I need to make this screen smaller. Well, I don't want to minimize it, but I want to make it a smaller viewing screen. Right, like, like, can you drag it so we can see half and half? You know how window, here, this is what I mean. <laughs> Maybe it's oh, this one. Oh, yeah, I know what you're asking. Cool. There we go, that's one. Okay, so we can see both. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative, or what, f prime of x of this function, 3x to the fifth plus 1 over x. And uh, will you clear my home, please? Because, okay. All right, so where is that command? We're going to go to the calculus menu, which is F3. And then it's going to be number one. So everybody should do that. 
All right, so press number one, and then you'll see what comes up. What comes up? The, the little D for differentiate, parentheses, and then what is the argument? The argument is your f of x, you put in there, whatever it is, comma, x, comma, or maybe you can close the close it. There we go. Okay, so there we go. So what are we going to do? We're going to type in 3x caret to the fifth, and uh, Clayton's going to do that over there, plus 1 over x. Now, no, after the 1 over x, you're going to have to put a comma. And you have to tell it what you're differentiating with respect to. What variable are we differentiating with respect to? X. All right. And then press Enter. And voila, does it give you the derivative with all those, without those X plus H calculations? The answer is yes. Okay. Which is really, 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 really cool. I dare the 84 to do that. Yeah. It can. All right. Not only that, what is the derivative? No, okay, yes, it is that. But I mean, what is the derivative? It is the instantaneous rate of change of f, which is the slope of the tangent line at any x, right? So this is a function that represents all of the slopes. Well, this is not necessarily helpful. I would like to have the slope at x equal 1. So what do we do? We take our expression here. So hop up there and grab the, this one here, the d dx, not that one. Clear that out. Grab the derivative expression, press enter. And then we're going to use the such that bar, which is beside the 7. And we want to let x equal so you type in x equal 1. And that's going to give you the slope at, at x equal 1. So it's derivative of 3x caret 5 plus 1 comma, uh, 1 over x, sorry, comma x close such that, which is next to the 7, x equals 1. And this is the slope or the instantaneous, this is f prime of 1, which is 14, which means that's the slope of f of x at x equals 14. So let's put it together. So if I were to graph, let's graph. Let's go to y equals really quickly. Oh, yeah. Clear all that out. Nice. One more. There's y1 up there. Thank you. Okay. And we're going to type in 3x to the fifth plus 1 over x. And let's say I want the tangent line there. What would it be? Well, we already know that x is 1. What's the point? It's going to be 1, comma. We have the slope is 14. The point when I plug in 1 into my function is going to be 3 plus 1 over 1, which is, right, 4, f, right? Yes. So my point's 1, comma, 4. So my tangent line is going to be y minus 4 equals 14 times x minus 1, but I know that I can move the 4 over very easily, and this would be x minus 1 plus 4. I wouldn't even multiply it out. I'd just leave it like that, okay? So let's type that into y2. And then we need to expand our viewing window. No, no, maybe my, we'll see what my window is because I was doing other things. But we need it bigger than 4. So let's make the y max, I don't know, 10. All right, and we want the slope at 1, so that'll work. We're, the rest is okay. All right, so let's uh, go diamond graph. He did. There it is. There's the original function in y1, and then we're going to graph the tangent line at 1. It's busy 4. Do you see how it worked? At 1, 4, I have a tangent line. So what does f prime tell you? It tells you the slope. 
So we just found the tangent line above the derivative. We, no, we found the tangent line to f, and the derivative is nothing more than the slope to f. All right, so let's do a little bit more practice here. All right, um, on the next page, we're, we have f of x. We're going to use our calculator. Yes, sir? Oh, Derivative. Not quite yet. Anti derivative. Anti -derivative. Yeah, I, I appreciate. I mean, you know, we have to hold back the horses there because, yes, I am going to tell you that, but not quite yet. All right. So we're going to use our calculator here to find this derivative. So we go to F3, differentiate, which is number one, and we're trying to find F prime of X. So F prime of X is nothing more than when you type in the calculator here, the derivative of X squared, comma, X close the parentheses. And what do we get? 2X. Well, that's really easy. All right, let's go to number two. We're going to find F prime of X with F of X being x cubed. So what do we get? We already did this. So remember, 3x squared. Yes? All right, now x to the fifth. What's the pattern do you suspect? 5x to the fourth. You'd be right. But the calculator will tell you this which is very powerful. Ooh. F prime of X is equal to, now this is X to the minus two. So what do we get? Four X cubed minus two over X cubed. So two X to the minus three, yes. Don't worry, I'm going to give you the secret here in a minute. Now, this is f of x equals 7. If f of x is 7, is it ever changing? It's always 7. So its rate of change has to be 0. And think of that as 7 is a horizontal line, its slope is always 0. All right, now, 6. F prime of X is, we're typing in 3X to the 6th plus X to the 1 half. Now, when you plug in X to the 1 half in your calculator, you must use parentheses for the exponent. Can you just do X to the 5? Sorry. Well, Okay, so we're going to get 18x to the 5th plus 1 over 2 root x minus 1 over x squared. Yes, sir. What? Yes, you, okay, so in calculus you can have a square root in the denominator. I like to jokingly say we are mathematical adults when we get to calculus and we don't have to graph models. You can leave a square root in the denominator. Okay? Now, is this the only derivative there is? This, this is a function of its own right, isn't it? Does it have a rate of change? How do I find the second derivative? So, you do the, the same thing. So, grab, up, grab your original statement. And then you did it with respect to scroll over. You, you do. You're going to keep going. You scroll over to the right. You're all the way over. So you got to go comma x. Comma, no. Oh, no, you grabbed the derivative. No, I'm going to show you another way. So grab the original statement. This one here, the 3x. Okay. So it's... 
It's comma two, yes, after the X. X to the point five plus X to the negative one. No, no, no. Okay, so inside the parentheses now, yeah. after the X, you're going to put a comma two because it defaults to the first derivative. Okay, so what is the second derivative then? You press enter. That's the second derivative, which is 90x to the fourth minus 4, or wait, 1 fourth, x to the 3 halves plus 2 over x cubed. Could I find the third derivative by doing what? Comma 3. I do not suggest we do comma 100 because what happens to the machine is it says overload. Okay, I had somebody do that once and it, it stayed frozen for a while. No, but I mean, you just have to do our reset or something. Like anyway. anyway, so here we go. Now you know how to do the first, second, third. You can do any derivative you want. What does it default to? The first derivative. So you don't have to put a comma 1. It knows that it's going to take the derivative, and it's going to do the first derivative without the comma 1. Okay? Moving right along. What if I wanted to know the slope at a certain point, which is what I've already alluded to? How would we do this? We'd find, first of all, it's on the AP exam, it's really helpful to... Um, Uh, if it's asking you for f prime of 2, it's always the correct thing to do to show your work. So you show them what f prime of x is first, and then you plug in 2 after that. So we're going to find out what f prime of x is. Now that's x to the x. So we're going to take the derivative. So we go f3, number 1, and x to the x, comma, x. Close the parentheses, and we're going to get an expression here, which is natural log of x plus 1 times x to the x. And now, if I want to know what the derivative is at 2, what are we going to do? We're going to use the such that bar. We're going to take the derivative here at the very end. No, not that one. Down at the bottom here. We're going to use our original expression, and we're going to go such that x equals 2. Very nice. So that's what? 4 times the natural log of 2 plus 1. And they didn't, you know, if you want the decimal, you just do diamond approximate to get the decimal. But Okay. So mathematically, you should show your derivative and then say what the slope is there, okay? Okay. All right, now, do the same for this one. And somebody's going to come up here and type it. Okay. So for the end of the negative 4 is going to be a slope at f of negative 4. Yes. Yes. Now it says round to 3, but we're going to be exact. Okay, we're going to write the derivative down first. Do you have that already? Please go ahead. Ah. Somebody willing to come up here and come, please. And then write down what f of x, f prime of x is, and then write f prime of negative 4. I'll write my answers. Yeah. I mean, we see it right here, but. Let me write it down. Let's see approximate. Yeah, well, it says approximate up here, but I like exact. Exact is nice. But if you're trying to find it on a graph, it's nice to see the approximate, right? Okay, so what's f prime? If you're blocking, just be careful now because the paper will hit the wall and make ink. Uh, I got 
Is that right? Yep. All right. Now, I am going to do an example from the homework, which is actually one of the homework problems. It's number 31. And I like to do this one because it says show that f of x does not have a derivative at x equal 1. And my f of x in this case is x squared plus x, x less than or equal to 1, and then it's 3x minus 2 for x greater than 1, okay? That's number 31. Now, for you to have a derivative or a slope of a tangent line, a rate of change at your graph, yes, it needs, your function needs to be continuous. So you must always check for continuity first. Okay, since we are learning about what's going on at x equal 1, what do we need for continuity at x equal 1? Uh, for all those of you watching the video, they said, and I heard them in multiple different uh, versions here, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x has to equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x has to equal f of 1. All right, so I need to find the, uh, the limit as uh, x approaches 1 from the left. So which branch of the piecewise am I going to use? It's the upper one, and we get, when I plug in 1, we get 2. So I get a 2. And then the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side is 1. Okay, so it's not continuous. But let's say you blew past the fact that it was not continuous and said, I'm going to find the derivative at 1. So let's say we're trying to find the derivative at 1. Well, there's a left-hand derivative and a right-hand derivative. So I have a slope of a function on the left-hand side and a slope of a function on the right. Okay? But... If I were to take the slope of this curve, now have we ascertained or figured out what the pattern is? What is the pattern here? It would be 2x plus 1. There's a slope of x of 1. So this would be 2x plus 1. And when I plug 1 in, I get 2x plus 1. 3. What is the slope of this line? 3. So the slopes are equal. So that's not helpful, is it, if the slopes are equal? So how would I prove it with the right? I'm going to do a right hand limit, a right hand derivative. Now, it's problems like these where I recommend that we're going to do um, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 1 plus h. Now why am I using 1? Because I want the derivative at 1. And I'm, okay, minus f of 1 all over h. The limit as h goes to 0 of f of 1 plus h. On the right side, I'm using this function, this line, yes? So what am I plugging in? I'm plugging in 1 plus h into this expression, which would be 3 times 1 plus h. What is it? Minus 2? Minus 2. Minus f of 1. Did we figure out what f of 1 was? Well, f of 1 is that on this branch. F of 1 is up here. What is it? It's 1. It's, it's, two. it's 2. So minus 2 all over h. 
So what happens is I get these twos canceling, and I'm left with the limit as h goes to zero. Uh, what? Negative two minus two. F of one is two, isn't it? Oh, no, no, it's negative four, sorry. Goodness gracious, they uh, lie. <laughs> I'm so used to them canceling. Yes, yes I'm goodness. sorry. Goodness gracious. The good news is that I have what? An undo button. Thank you for letting me know. Goodness gracious, I could not come out of my skin any more than I did just at that moment. So thank you for that. My adrenaline is way up here now. <laughs> okay, so this is 3, right, plus 3H, I'm sorry, minus 4. I can't add, I promise. I did graduate from church tech. Okay, here we go. Limit as H goes to 0 of, oh, simplifying. Uh, 3H minus 1 over H. Hmm, what happened? The H canceled. H did not cancel, but I am not going to lose my mind. I'm going to think about the graph of this in H fill versus X. So this is H, and this is F of H. Where do I have an asymptote? I'm graphing this at zero, yes. Horizontal, three, very nice. Um, do I have any zeros? I have one at one. Third, yes. <laughs> My adrenaline is still at the ceiling. Okay. And then uh, what's the multiplicity of the H? Is zero on the bottom one, so I'm going to pass through infinity and come out the other side. Does this limit exist? Which means the right hand derivative does not exist. Does not exist. Okay, so when you are continuous. The right or the left hand derivative won't exist, okay? Yeah. Now, why did I use 1 plus h in this case? All right. When you do right or left hand derivatives, you should put 